When caring for a patient with a chest tube, there are several things that we need to keep in mind to be able to provide them with the best nursing care available. This presentation is going to cover those things that you need to know to care for the patient and to know the right answers for NCLEX questions and for to answer questions in your class during your respiratory section. So if you would like to learn more about chest tubes, the best resource I can provide to you is going to be the Atrium Atrium website. Atrium is the provider of chest tubes that are that I have seen most often in the ICU. So if you want to learn more, go over to Atrium. They have pamphlets and everything about different chest tubes and different things that you need to know to understand the more complex things with the chest tubes. This presentation is going to allow you to understand exactly what you need to know when caring for a patient and to pass NCLEX questions. So first of all, let's talk about the indication for chest tubes. Primarily, we're going to be giving chest tubes to drain fluid, blood, or air. So some of the things that would require chest tubes might be like a pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung, hemothorax, which would be blood in the lung, uh, post-operative chest drainage, st other post-operative reasons um, that a patient may need to get some of this fluid off of their, or fluid or air. Uh, sometimes abdominal surgeries or back surgeries can cause a little bit of uh, a pneumothorax, so that would require uh, relieving that air. Other reasons would be to establish negative pressure or to re-establish negative pressure, and then also to facilitate uh, chest expansion. So, for example, uh, with like a, a pneumothorax or something like that. Okay? So let's look over here. Like I said, Atrium is the brand that you're going to see most often. Um, so this is the collection chamber here. You can see it can go all the way up to 2,000 mils. And this tube here is the tube that's coming from the patient's chest. So if you follow this cursor here, you can see there's some fluid that's being suctioned into the tube and then this is the collection port and what you want to do is you want to mark like especially you can see there's actually a couple little marks here on this chest tube drainage system and you'll want to mark that every couple hours um, to do to be able to determine you know if if there is drainage or how much drainage there has been this little line right here this is your water sill okay so what's going to happen here is that the water seal is going to enable air to exit but not allow it to enter. So air exits can't enter. It will be filled up to this two centimeter line. Okay. Um, and what that's going to do is the patient inspires. No air is going to be able to get in. Okay. They're going to be breathing without entering air but as they expire some air is going to go be able to exit there. Okay, now understanding that, we can understand, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. And then we can set our pressures here, and we can also set up uh, suction as well. Okay, so those are kind of the parts of the chest tube. This is the Oasis model by Atrium. Okay, so, and then obviously there's this little flip out thing here. I would probably flip that out a little bit more personally, but that is to help it to not um, tip over. The chest tube needs to be upright and it needs to be below the patient's chest. Okay. There's also little hangers here that can be hung at the side of the bed for transport um, or if you just want to kind of keep it off the ground. But generally it's just set at the foot of the bed um, with this out that needs to be upright, needs to be below the chest, kind of at the foot of the bed and then you want to coil all the tubing up in the bed so there's no there's not a whole bunch of loops down here. Alright. So that's the setup. Assessment. Titling. Okay, the first thing to know is titling. Titling is a movement with respiration. It's a rise with inspiration and lower with expiration. That is okay. Okay, no titling would mean re-expansion or obstruction. We don't want to see continuous bubbling, but this titling is okay. We want to assess the water sill level. Okay, we talked about that in this slide. We want to assess this every couple hours. We need to have, and this is filled with sterile water. Okay. How do you spell sterile? Sterile, sterile water, and that needs to be assessed every couple hours. There's a port in back where you can actually inject more water, 
So if, if you if you run short of water, you can actually in, in put a little bit more in there, and that needs to be assessed very closely. Output. So this number would vary based on experience and based on uh, relationship with the surgeon, etc. But generally, you'll you'll report um, if it's greater than seventy to a hundred mils every hour, and then you'll assess the coloring. If it's serosanguinous, if it's pussy looking. Um, if it's sanguinous, you know, you'd, you'd want to report that. And then you'll just need to talk to the, the surgeon and understand what type of coloring they're expecting. This is one thing that I see nurses kind of maybe fail to do sometimes, is to actually talk with the physicians and understand their plan. It can be more difficult maybe if you work at night, but if you do work at night, you can read the physician's notes either in the computer or if there's some sort of paper chart somewhere that you can read or the post-op report to understand what they're looking for. Okay, you want to know what type of drainage and how much drain they're, they're looking for so that you're not freaking out about something you shouldn't freak out, out about and at the same time so that you are freaking out about what you should freak out about. Okay, so this is just a little view of a chest tube. Okay, this is the chest tube coming out of the patient. This is a nice little occlusive dressing. And then this would be going to the drainage system. Okay, so that's what a chest tube would look like on a patient. All right. It gives you a little view. Now, some of the nursing care. Like I said, you're going to coil the extra tubing in the bed. Just kind of set it there, coil it. Uh, just kind of have it sitting right there. And do not clamp the tube. You're never going to want to clamp it unless you have specific instruction to do it for a specific time and for a specific reason. The reason is because if you clamp that tube, you can actually create a tension pneumothorax. Also, you're never going to strip the tubing, uh, strip or milk, some people will call it milk, you're not going to strip that tubing, which means pulling, kind of dragging your fingers along it to try to get some of the drainage out. Never do that um, because that could, like I say, create that high negative pressure within the lung. And that could be very detrimental to the patient. There's a couple things you're going to want to keep at the bedside. Okay, You want to keep hemostats, two pairs. You want to keep sterile water and the little syringe to insert more if you need to, and you want to keep a, a sterile occlusive dressing. I know I spare sterile wrong, I'm not sure, I don't remember. So you want to keep a sterile occlusive dressing. Occlusive means that it's like petroleum coated or something so that it's not going to allow air to get in or out, okay? So those things you want to keep at bedside for it in case there is any sort of um, complication. We'll get into that in just a second. Okay, some of the complications that we can have. These are the two that you need to know about, um, and I would spend my time studying these and what you should do. So some of the complications are going to be an air leak. So what you'll notice with an air leak is there'll be continuous bubbling. Okay, that little water seal chamber is just going to be bubbling, bubbling, bubbling uh, quite a bit. I've seen this happen several times, um, and it's a very easy fix. What you'll do is you'll take your two hemostats. Remember you have two hemostats? And you're going to clamp. This would be an instance where you would you, you would need to clamp to try to find out where the air leak actually is. So you would take your two hemostats. Uh, let's draw our patient here. Here's our patient. Okay, and here's the chest tube coming out. Here's our drainage system. So what you would do is you see, you're noticing continuous continuous bubbling right down here. Okay, in your in your actual uh, water seal. So what you do is you would take one hemostat and clamp it right next to the patient's chest. And you're not doing this permanently, you're just doing this to assess. And then you would clamp, um, and if, if you notice that it's it, it's still, if the bubbling stops, then there's an, a leak at the insertion site, okay? So if the bubbling stops there, there's a leak at the insertion site, okay? And then what you'll do is you'll, you'll just kind of cross clamp and move your way down until you notice the, the, the um, bubbling stop. So you would put one hemostat here, one here, if the drain, if the bubbling stops, that means your leak is in this area. If the if the bubbling continues, you take one of the you take this hemostat, move it down here. If the bubbling continues, you continue to do that all the way down until the bubbling stops. If the bubbling stops, that means you found that your leak is in within one of these areas. You identify it and you tape it with uh, a very uh, good tape, and then you you release this cross clamp and see if if you can continue the suctioning. Now, there are a lot of places that, uh, you know, tubing's connected, and there's a lot of places where it's possible to have a leak. So you just want to very closely monitor um, this area here. The way you're going to notice an air leak is that continuous bubbling in there. 
if that happens, you need to address it quickly um, to make sure that the patient is able to continue to drain as they need to. The other uh, complication that you will be tested on, on the NCLEX, absolutely is going to be removal. Okay, let's say your patient's a little bit confused, they're sitting here in bed, they reach down there, they rip it out. Or let's say you're transporting the patient, this thing falls down and it pulls it out. Okay, that's, that's an emergency, okay, of course. And we want to make sure that we fix that very quickly. So wh what can happen is that the air can escape very quickly and this can cause a tension pneumothorax as well. So we want to address that very quickly. The way that we're going to ad address that is we're going to slap, uh, so let's say this is the patient's chest here, okay? And here's our chest tube insertion site. And let's say our little friend here got uh, a little anxious in the middle of the night and they rip the chest tube out. You walk in the room and it's sitting in their hand, okay? What you're going to do, first of all, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, throw an occlusive dressing on the site. Now you're only going to, sit, and then you're going to tape it on three sides, okay? Now, the reason you're, gonna, you're only going to tape it on three sides is you need to allow air to uh, escape during expiration to prevent that tension pneumo. Okay, so you want that, that leak, that, that air to still be able to get out as the patient expires, okay? So you tape it on three sides, your occlusive dressing, and you leave it open on one side to allow air to escape in order to prevent a tension pneumothorax. That's the reason you do that. Be sure you remember three sides, three sides, three sides, three th sides, three sides. Always remember that. That is uh, required, okay? Make sure that that's what you're doing, all right? So these are the things that you absolutely must need to know uh, for uh, chest tubes and the NCLEX and for your respiratory section. Be sure to go visit us at nursingstudentbooks.com where you can find all of our books, top-ranked Amazon books, um, several books in the top uh, 100 for all nonfiction books, and just about 15 different books available for you to study. Also visit our blog at nrsng.com where you can find out about uh, new books, uh, some of our study apps for NCLEX, and all of our videos and podcasts and everything that are up there. All right, make sure you check those two things out, you guys. You can do this. Nursing school is hard, but you can do it. Um, thousands and thousands of nurses have done this before. We've all been through it before, and we understand how hard it is. We're here to help. So if you want to reach out to me, you can reach me, contact at nrsng.com. I'm happy to hear from you. Uh, I love hearing all your, your stories and everything. Also, be sure to subscribe. You can click this little thing up here in the corner, or you can click on my channel name down there to subscribe, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. All right? Thanks a lot, guys. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Best place to do, though, is to do it over on Facebook, 